And uh, at the very top, I have Waco Hoover. So Waco, could you um, introduce yourself briefly and uh, what you do, who you are? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, first of all, guys, thanks so much for, uh, for including me in this. Very excited to be a part of it and supporting uh, everything that's going on with the, uh, with the festival. Uh, so uh, Waco Hoover, I'm the Chief Executive Officer for uh, Vet TV. We're the largest streaming platform uh, serving the military community. Uh, historically, we've focused predominantly on comedy as a genre. Uh, but more recently, over the past year, we've expanded into uh, different types of content. Uh, in fact, we just launched a docu-series last week called Let's Talk About the War, uh, giving combat veterans an opportunity to voice their very raw and candid perspectives on what their perspective is for pulling out of uh, Afghanistan and the way that was done and just uh, what, 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 what the war meant to them, uh, given the, the full context of it. Uh, so we're very, very excited about uh, launching that. Uh, yeah, thank you. Okay, my name is Jane Austen, and I am a stunt woman currently uh, graduated into stunt coordinating, which I'm really excited about. Um, a, a project that I worked on recently that I was like, the, on my bucket list is I got to work on Thor, the new Thor movie, doing a, a lot of uh, rigging on it uh, for the pickup shot. So that was really fun. So, but yeah, you know, I own a company called Hollywood Stunt Works where we do a lot of rigging and stunt coordinating. And uh, I've been doing this since 1987. Um, hi, thank you for letting me be a part of this. It's a privilege to work with vets at any time. Um, I did not serve, so thank you all for your service. Um, I'm a writer and director. Um, you might've heard of uh, Hunger Games. I was one of the writers on that. Um, I wrote Captain Phillips. Uh, last year, uh, I wrote and directed a thing on uh, Showtime called Comey Rule, which was about James Comey and, and Donald Trump. And I work as often as I possibly can with uh, all kinds of vets groups, uh, just doing whatever I can for them. So um, it's a pleasure to be with you guys. Thank you. Hi, thanks for in, uh, including me in this. My name is Gil Hubbs. I'm a freelance cinematographer and been doing it since uh, 1965 when I got out of the Marine Corps Reserve. Um, and I've uh, had a very, varied, I've had a very varied career doing documentaries and, and industrials and moving into doing commercials and uh, television and a few features. Um, I'm retired now. Uh, I'm a member of the American Society of Cinematographers. And so one of the first things I shot was Enter the Dragon. And um, and I ended my career, I think, with Murphy Brown and some other sitcoms. So I've done pretty much everything in the entertainment game between those things, all sorts of different things. And, and I realized, um, you know, there, everybody now goes to film school and I didn't go to film school. I, I got out and was working as a waiter and met people. And, um, uh, and I had a lot of really tremendous breaks and the business was really changing back then. But uh, people have asked me, well, how did you learn to, you know, work a camera? And I've, I've come to, I, I just thought of this a year or so ago. Well, when I was in the Marine Corps, they taught me how to operate a rifle. And it took three weeks. And I can hit something at 500 yards. And so a camera, it's kind of the same. You put stuff in, you got to, you know, understand, you know, how to put it in right. You aim and focus, and uh, uh, and actually, I think the rifle was harder. <laughs> hey guys, you got a, a two for one sale here. You got me and August Danell from We Are the Mighty. Uh, Augie is the head of production. Not to steal your thunder, Augie, from from your own intro. Um, and I am uh, Mark Harper, Air Force veteran, and I am the CEO of, of We Are the Mighty. We just um, we just f finished a couple pretty large projects, uh, but I'm going to let Augie get into that. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, so uh, Mark and I have been a part of We Are the Mighty. We helped build this company about eight years ago. It's a it's a media brand for and by the military community, and uh, we started with very little digital productions uh, eight years ago, and now we have a few on television. We had a series that was for Quibi now, the Roku channel. That's all about. Um, the 10 weeks of army boot camp. that's called 10 weeks. Uh, and uh, like Mark said, I'm the head of production here at We Are the Mighty. 
the majority of what we do is uh, documentary style content. Sometimes there's hosted, um, and we're uh, you know we're still trying to get get a little bit more into the scripted game. Obviously, is the holy grail. Um, but uh, yeah, I love the American Legion. We're both members of the American Legion in Hollywood. Uh, it's right down the, the block from our office. So it's uh, it's always great to be working with you guys, Jarek. So happy to be here. So um, let's just start in a really broad sense. If we were to choose a best overall of these five uh, entries, what would be some of the things that you would look for in a best overall scripted short story? And anyone can start off if they like. Screenwriting is uh, uh, an intellectual exercise that's designed to elicit an emotional response. In other words, you wanna do the thinking so that your audience can do the feeling. Um, right above all your faces in big block letters across the top of my monitor, it says, what is the simple emotional journey? Um, the thing that I, when, when I'm stuck, um, I don't ask myself what would be cool next. I said, I would ask myself, what is the simple emotional journey? What's the story I'm telling? And it has to be told in emotional terms. If I've written a script and someone calls me and says, I read it, it's the smartest script I've ever read. I've failed a hundred percent because I'm reaching them up here and not in their guts. Um, so the thing I'm looking for when I look at any movie is, am I being moved? Do I care? Am I emotionally invested? If that's there, everything else follows. If that's there, nothing else can possibly work. So that's what I always look for. How about this? Let, let's get a little bit more fine tuned now. And let's say, if we were gonna specifically look at direction, best direction, how would we identify direction as a, as a, a skill as opposed to just best overall? It's very important for the director to really tell the story of what the script is. It's very important for them to really grasp what the writer was writing, what the message was, what the story is, and to be able to capture that on film so that the audience can really get the message of what the writer was trying to achieve. You know, when, when someone's the, the, the director behind a, a scripted film, I think it's keeping a through line together throughout the entire thing. So to, to separate it from the script, from the story of it, you know, you want to, you want to see a style that's from scene to scene all the way through that there's a choice being made, whether it's, you know, it's, whether it's the lights going on and off, you know, a little avant-garde thing, uh, you know, like with, with the camera movement or the camera style or the production design, you know, all of those things are linked by the director, right? There's not, you know, things are, there's a reason why the production design looks that way. There's a reason the why, why we're using a handheld camera instead of a, a dolly or a steady cam. There's a reason why this actor is making these choices, you know? The director's just making sure everybody's making the same movie. So when you see it, when you see it gel and it come together, uh, and you're like, oh, I get, I get why that that that's sitting in the scene right there, that color, you know, why the camera is doing this. And, you know, when it all kind of comes together, I feel like that's good directing. That's kind of the way I look at it. Yeah. Is it professional? I mean, is it, is it, do you understand who these people are? Do you tell a story that is, uh, uh, you can understand it? Uh, like, are all the, It'd be like reading something or all the words on the page. Uh, you have to, you know, uh, float, float around. And can, you, can you tell a story with dialogue, two people talking? Can you cut between the close-ups, have the eye line right? And if, and if the eye line isn't right, that, that's, you're trying to do something to the audience. So the, the professional aspects of telling a story, I think the director you know, uh, drives that ship and um, um, period. Those are both really, really important. And, and uh, I really wanna amplify what Augie was saying. You know, if you, if you think in terms of what are the arrows that you have in your quiver as a director when you're making a, a movie of this size, right? What are the tools you actually have in the toolbox? Performance, script, obviously, you might have some version of makeup or hair or music, but of course camera, uh, the pace, the way in which it's edited, you're certainly not gonna have any CGI or anything like that that's going to have, that's going to cost money. 
but that what they are all conspiring to do, all those choices, is to establish a consistent tone. That's the thing that Augie's talking about. That that the performances match the script, and that the camera is conspiring to help you tell your story. Like for example, Augie right now should just fire his gaffer, whoever that gaffer is. <laughs> he, he's got to go because that gaffer. Yeah, the gaffer's gone. done. He's uh, he's out. Yeah, he, he's dead. You need a replacement gaffer. But again, yeah. it's that idea of are you maximizing all the tools that are at your disposal as a storyteller? Are you not only shooting the script, but are you beating the page? That's the thing you always try to do when you're a director. You try to beat the page, try to find what's living between the words so that you're not just doing sort of a staged reading of some you know, great five page script. Let's talk about acting a little bit. What, what, are, what, what do you look for in acting? Again, it's telling the story and really showing the emotions. I hate it when actors don't show the emotions of what they're supposed to be showing. It drives me insane, <laughs> you know? So just, you know, I mean, really getting into the character and understanding what this character is all about and how, you know, how they relate to the story or what their journey is in the story. For me, um, you wanna make sure that they are playing an intention and not an emotion. In other words, the, simple, the simplest rule about that is never give an actor an adjective. Always give them a verb. You go up to an actress and you say, be sexy. And that actress is going to be thinking, am I not sexy? What, what do I have to do to look sexy? Does this guy not think I'm sexy? And all of a sudden, they're going to be so deep in their head, you're never going to get them out. But you go to that same actress and you give her an intention. You say, uh, seduce him, coddle him, ignore him, punish him, whatever that is then to get what she, what she wants, which is a pat on the head from you, the director, she's got to take her concentration off herself and put it on the other actor. And now she's alive in the scene. Now she's improvising. Even if she's saying the words, she's improvising because she's always playing the intention. So when I'm on a set, I spend very little time talking to actors about the words. I spend a lot of time talking to actors about what the words mean. What does the character want? How is the character trying to get it? That's, that's what directing is about to me. You know, there's 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 technical acting and then there's kind of emotional acting and technical acting is like, OK, they're, they're believable. I get it. it's not bad acting. You know, everybody can tell what bad acting is. But, you know, so it can be technically good. But then when you when you ha when you watch someone's performance and you're like, holy shit, that so, so they're going through something, you know, there's there's some kind of connection with whatever's happening in the script whatever's happening in the, in the, in the story and in the plot, you know, these, these connections that they're having with other people, um, you know, some of it is hard to put your finger on, but it, but it, it, you know, you know it when it's there, you can, you can tell the, a solid performance and it's, it's about the emotional investment that, that actors bring separate from everything else that's cut that their direction and the script is coming. That's beautiful. Well, thank you. I appreciate yeah. that you guys. Oh, I'm going to wrap up this category with, um, we're gonna say um, honorable mentions. See, one thing that I realized is that we're gonna have some makeup, special effects, possibly editing, graphics, music. Um, what do you think would stand out as something that could be identified as an honorable mention? I, I know this is kind of a vague question, but any thoughts yeah, on that? I'd say the one that looks like had, had a lot of effort and maybe money like and like really time and energy got put into it and it's not quite that good <laughs> the one that's not quite that good but but it looked like they really tried i that's i guess yeah effort an a for effort yeah and, and also um you know a voice just a, a voice mm -hmm. that feels kind of singular a point of view about the world that is um that is using the camera to express itself um that's what i'm looking for what it is, is when you think back at all the movies that you watch and all the, the shows that you really love, you can just like, for example, um, there, I watched something the other day and I was just like, going, wow, that wardrobe was so unique. You know, something that really, or that makeup was just so innovative. Special effects, you know, I mean, for me, I'm kind of tainted because 
I live around explosions and, you know, wire work and green screens and blue screens and stuff like that. So that to me isn't as fascinating as good wardrobe. You know, something that I love it. This thing that I saw the other day, you didn't know what time period it was from because it kind of had some old styles with modern, with, and it was really the, the wardrobe really set the tone of when this movie was taking place because you couldn't figure it out from the wardrobe. And that to me is something that's really unique. Awesome. We're going to wrap up the scripted short story category. And we're going to move to news documentary. And I'm going to start with Gil. Uh, you mentioned that you had some experience in documentary. What would make a, um, a, a theatrical different than news in terms of cinematography for you? Well, entertainment. You know, if it's a theatrical or entertainment show as opposed to what happened at 6th and Main today. Anybody else have thoughts on this? Like what might be the difference? What, what how do you determine? Um, so yeah so the 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 things that that um impress me about the because because most of what we do is documentary too and and the the dps that we work with and i've kind of narrowed it down really to just one and one or two that i that i go to for everything because these guys are storytellers too right not that not that narrative cinematographers are not storytellers but you're like a writer when you're a cinematographer on a documentary and it's verite because you have to know what to point the camera at you have to know who to follow you have to know what to get, not only uh, in story, meaning like you want to hear what they're saying, if they're having an interesting conversation or something, but you have to know how to visually tell the story. So like, you know, documentaries that, my favorite documentaries and what I try to, to emulate in, in my work is visually beautiful documentaries. You know, can't, can't, the camera technology that we have these days is so great and portable and relatively cheap so that you don't have, you know, small production companies like us can, 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 and a good cinematographer can pretty much do anything. Um, you know, nowadays you kind of, you kind of have no excuse, but to, but to make a, a, a cine cinematic, cinema, uh, cinematic documentary, because, you know, we have the equipment. It's just about when, when you have a cinematographer knowing, you know, knowing what the story is, because you're gonna to wanna to know what beautiful images to get because you can't just get anything. It's gotta pair with what is coming out of interview, is coming out of all the other elements that you that you weave together to make a documentary story. There's no script or there might be an outline, there might be some semblance of a script, but it's not like, you're not going in with a, a, a shot list because we gotta get, you know, we're gonna get coverage on the scene, we gotta get her shot, we gotta get the two shot. It's not like that. You, the, the cinematographer's gotta know how this is getting pieced together. And the, the more the cinematographer knows how this story is going to get pieced together with the visuals and, and also the story and also what, you know, what he's pointing at to get a conversation or whatever that, that kind of verite discussion shot is, uh, the, the better, the better movie it's going to be, the better documentary it's going to be, and the better the editor, you know, the, the more tools the editor is going to have and flavors and paintbrushes to be able to assemble the thing. I think that's really important. I, I would amplify it just by saying that in, in one sense, the rules between documentary and, and scripted are actually the same, which is I would go back to that idea of those same words right above the top of my monitor. What is the simple emotional journey? What, what emotion are you trying to evoke from people? And who is the, who's your character? Who's the lead, um, the emotional window through which we're stepping into the story? If I were going to do a documentary about this competition itself, oh, that's interesting, Hollywood Post 43, they're doing a competition with a bunch of shorts. That's kind of interesting. But I would pick one person or two people who were filmmakers and I would tell the story of why they're doing what they're doing and why we as an audience should care. And then all of a sudden you've got a rooting interest. It's the same thing as wanting Chief Brody to catch the shark or wanting Clarice Starling to stop the killer or wanting Dorothy to get back home. Like there has to be something we're leaning in and hoping will happen. And that dictates everything you go shoot and it certainly dictates everything that you're gonna edit. First off, just the subject. You know, I mean, in the first five minutes, it's gotta grab you. It's gotta grab your audience that to make you want to watch it all the way through. You know, I just saw a fascinating documentary about Leonard Nimoy the other day. And it was, I mean, I thought I knew everything about him because I'm like a Trekkie at heart, but I learned so much about him 
it was fascinating. And his son made it. So it, you know, went through his whole life, you know, and it just, and it's, you know, anybody can tell a new story, but to make it all the, all the little tidbits that uh, facts that you wouldn't necessarily just know off the top of anybody's head. I, that's what I think makes a good documentary. It's all of the stuff that's underneath that surface of the topic. Well, and then that leads us into, uh, which we kind of covered it. The last uh, part I'll uh, talk about is writing, the writing, the reporting, the presentation, uh, voiceover versus reporting on screen. Any thoughts on that? What comes to mind here is uh, way back, uh, I don't know, 10 years ago in film school, uh, I, wrote a, I wrote a paper about um, how no documentary, documentary is scripted. How, how documentary isn't isn't just like some slice of real life. Uh, there there is a story. There is a writer. There is a person telling their point of view on whatever it is. Um, so I think best you know best writing is you know manipulate is a is a nasty term. I, you know it's not like you're manipulating what what you're getting, but you have to you have to have a point of view, and you have to have you know you have to be able to. Um, you know, tell the truth. I mean, whatever that is, that's a whole other paper that you write, you know, what is truth in cinema, but like, you know, you have to kind of tell your point of view in a way that's in informative, but also is compelling. You know, you're, you're, you're following a, you, you know, like, like Billy said, you know, you want to invest in a character, you know, whether that's a, a, an actor that comes in to play a part that's written on the page, or it's a real person. Um, you know, you want to follow this character. But what a, another big, big thing I've learned over the past 10 years in doing this professionally is like, you can't just rely on reality and documentary. It's not a reality show. Well, <laughs> it's not a reality show, not that reality is reality show. But like, you know, you, you have to put your characters into situations where you, and, and we at We Are the Mighty do documentaries very quickly sometimes. So it's not like we can verite, sit around and see what happens. Um, you know, you have, to, you have to know how to get what you want for the story you are telling, you know, cause it's not news. It's not like you're just going there and filming something to, to show the audience uh, what happened. You know, you want to tell a story. So I think if, I don't know, I, I guess I overheard that people are, watching this, but if you know any, any advice I'd give to a, to a younger documentarian person is that, you know, you have to get, get it in the camera, what you, what story you want to tell. If you go out and, and you know, what you, that this goes back to the cinematographer getting the stuff for the edit, you know, if you want to go out and you don't get the stuff to tell the story you want to tell, you either have to think about, well, am I going to get stock footage? Am I going to do a re in reenactment? Am I going to do an animation? Or you have to say, well, how am I going to put my character in this situation to get that kind of scene? Or how am I going to put that, the, my character in, in the world where something might happen where I need this piece of glue to move the, 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 the story from one place to the next? You know, you're not, you're not dictating what they do, but you have to kind of move stuff around so that things happen that you want to see happen in your story. Cause it's the same thing. It's your story. You are telling, it just happens to be real people. You're telling a story about. Excellent. Oh, yeah, I want to take the sting out of the word manipulate. Yeah. <laughs> I want to set. I want to set you free. Uh, one storyteller to another. That's what we do. Okay. Right. That's our job. Unless your documentary is going to be security cam footage straight up with no edits. Okay you are in the business of manipulating. The second right. you make an edit, you are imposing some sort of subjective point of view onto the material and you are telling your particular version of the truth. That, that's what we do, that's our job. Our job as writers and as directors is to manipulate the studios into saying yes and then to manipulate actors into doing what we want and manipulating our crews into working their tails off for us. That's, our, that's the gig, yeah. right? There you so go. You have to embrace it. And if you are making a documentary film, and this circles back to the question you asked, Jarek. If you are embracing, if you are making a documentary film and you have made the cuts and you have placed the camera and you have chosen your subject, and then the question is, okay, what is going to get my point across more forcefully? Voiceover or absence of voiceover? 
that's the only, um, that is the only standard you should be using. What helps me get my point across more forcefully? If it's, if, if it's gonna be a super dramatic voiceover, great, go for it. We're, we're in the storytelling business and we are trying to get an effect. And, and all you're gonna be judged on by the group of us is how, how successful you were in getting that effect. Beautiful. Gil, you look like you had a, a, something else to say. No, I, I have a story about point of view. Um, uh, Cause I did documentaries a long, long time ago. And a friend of mine uh, did the documentary for uh, Kennedy, for John Kennedy. Wow. And shot the, um, part of it was the debate. And so, uh, and, and it was very successful for the campaign. I think it was one of the first, or the, I, it was the first long form film used in a presidential campaign, I think. And, it, and these guys were really behind Kennedy. He cut it the other way. And you watch this film and you just fell in love with John Kennedy. He cut it the other way and you fell in love with Richard Nixon. Hmm. I mean, there were shots looking up at Kennedy. They cut to Nixon when he was picking his nose. Uh, they zoomed in on the drop, you know, and, and he was, a, his, his name is Bob Collins. And uh, uh, I thought that was fascinating. Well, on that note, I, hey, I <laughs> want to thank everyone for, uh, <laughs> attended, for coming in, giving us your input. Um, I'm going to be presenting this to our members so they have an idea of what they want to uh, strive for when uh, participating in this competition.